Okay, we're going to start by talking a little bit about alignments. An alignment is a way that the machine discerns where the part is located on the table. Because you could set a part anywhere on here and the machine wouldn't know where to begin doing a measurement routine on it. So typically we want to affix our part to a table in a way that keeps it from moving. So if I was to use this little thumb screw here, you could see it can still move. It would be better if I could affix it in a, in a couple different ways to really assure that it's here. Um, I'm using a little thumb screw. It would be advantageous to have something where you can really torque it down and hold it tight against the table surface. Uh, we're going to start by using this demo part that Hexagon makes. Um, it has a number of different unique shapes and features in it which makes it ideal for learning how to make a number of measurements. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is perform this alignment. Now typically an alignment comes in two parts. It comes in a manual part where the operator places the part on the table and then through programming there will be a number of instructions that tell the operator which measurements to make on this in order to sort of loosely locate it on the table. When that's completed, we will then program in what's known as a DCC alignment. And DCC means direct computer control. The DCC alignment will go through and make a very similar alignment to the manual alignment, only it will use many more points to establish its location. At the end of an alignment, the machine knows implicitly where the part is located and further it will have an origin point on it. On this particular part, the origin will be in this corner. Uh, and it will know that, it is, that the part is located clearly in this area. We're going to start by making what's known as a plane, plane, plane alignment. Because this part is largely a rectangle, we can measure three planes, the top plane, the front plane, and the side plane, and that will hold it in its memory as the location for this part. Now an alignment looks at a few different things. It looks at a level point, and in this case we would call the top of this part the level. It also looks for an origin for X, Y, and Z. Um, and let's discuss that a little bit before we move on. So X is movement left to right. Y is movement front to back. And Z is movement up and down. In the case of one of these parts, we consider this to be x minus and things moving this way to be x plus. Y, we consider this moving towards us to be y minus and moving backwards to be y plus. And in z, we are looking at z plus and z minus. So those are our our x, y, and z vectors. We'll discuss vectors a little bit more as we move on, but this is a, an initial starting point for us. So we are going to start by making a manual alignment by making three measurements on the top plane. Three measurements on a plane will complete a plane as far as the instrument is concerned. And that's what we will do. We will actually measure three points on the top and call it a plane. And we will measure three points on the front and call that a plane and three points on this side and call it a plane. 
So we're going to get our software open and we're going to take a look at what we're doing with this. Okay, we have PC Demus open. One of the things we're going to do to start with is we're going to import in an actual file type. Our CAD drawing is in what's called an IGIS format. And located inside of here we have this hex block located on the desktop. And we're going to load it up and say process and OK. And now here is our hex block. This is the part that we're working from. You can see I can rotate it around by holding the scroll wheel down. I can also center this by saying control Z at any point in time. So this is the exact same part that we're working with on the table. It is now in memory here. Now we're going to start by doing some manual measurements on this part. I'm going to start by using these features which are considered measured features. We're going to measure a plane. So I'm going to start by clicking on measured plane. Now what we're going to do is pull our controller up. Now this controller requires that you press this metal button down in order to operate the joystick. The joystick works front and back, side to side, and then you twist it to move it up and down. So a counterclockwise twist makes it go down. So we're going to bring it up. We're going to move it up close to our part. And let's discuss a couple of quick features here. This wheel controls the speed at which the joystick will move things about. So if I move this down very low, you can see it moves very slowly. Move it up high, it goes very quickly. On the video it looks like these are strobing, but in actuality they're, they're solid. Um, this turtle will make things move very slowly. So when we want to contact the part, we want to be moving at turtle speed. So we're going to start by making a hit on this. You can hear it click, and you can also see in the status bar on the software that we've made a hit. There's our second hit, move it up here, make a third hit. Now if I press this check mark, this will accept our feature, and it is now listed as plane one. So we're going to move on now, we're going to work with our second plane. We'll bring this down, and we can touch it against the side here like this. Move it down a little deeper, touch it again. Now make sure when you contact it, you don't contact at the upper part of this shank or you get an erroneous hit information. So again, we are ready with those three hits. We accept it. We now have plane two. I'm going to turn off turtle just so I can move this a little quicker. We'll come over and we'll get our third plane. Again, I'm going into turtle mode. I'll make three hits on this. Doesn't matter where, as long as you get three hits. And there we are, we have our hits. Let's move this up out of the way. We're going to accept that plane. So now we have three planes accepted on the screen. So, from this, we can now make an alignment. Okay, so you see we have the three planes listed here. Now we're moving along here. We're going to pick our alignment. Uh, we can use either the new alignment from the file menu or either one of the two icons that I just showed. And we have the three planes listed here in our dialog box for the alignment. So we're going to start by saying that plane A is our level surface. Plane A or plane 1 is also our Z origin. 
and plane 2 or plane B is going to be stopping rotation around Z plus with our Y minus orientation and the same plane is going to be our Y origin and our last plane is our X origin so that stops translation in each of the three directions and stops rotation of the object as if we had a hand on top of it or in front of it and you can see now we have our little trihedron located in the lower left corner of our part. I'm going to relabel this our manual alignment and then we will move on from there we want to make sure we place the cursor at the very bottom of our programming. Whenever we make any new movements, we want to make sure that we start from the bottom. And we can do that by hitting Control End or by placing the cursor at the last point. Okay, so you can see here though that Although the orientation of that all looks perfect, it's not synchronized with our CAD model. And that's one of the problems if you make manual measurements. So we're going to show a slightly different way of doing this. I'm going to delete all that we just did. All right, and you can see that we're set up here to measure a plane. And here's the first plane that we're going to work with right here. What I need to do now is select a different mode to operate in. So this is little probe icon up here on the left. We're going to click that and now we can actually place points right on our CAD model. So there's our three points on the top plane. We'll accept that with the check mark key on the controller. And there it is. Now we can just rotate the CAD model by holding down the scroll wheel and moving the mouse. And then we could place three more points on this plane. Accept it. Again, rotate the CAD model. Place three points on this plane. Simple. It's as easy as that. I'm going to relabel these, plane A, plane B, and plane C. Place the cursor at the very bottom. Open up our alignment and do the same things. A will be level, A will be our Z origin, B We'll stop rotation around Y minus, or Y minus around Z plus, I should say. So as long as those are selected, we click level, I mean, I'm sorry, rotate. And B is our Y origin. It stops the part from translating forward and back. And C is our X origin, stops it from translating left and right. So now you can see the trihedron is located right on the corner of the model there where we want it to be. It's quick and easy this way. Much easier when you're working from a CAD model than if you're making just manual measurements on a part. You can see that worked very quickly. I'm just going to move the probe up out of the way here so you can see this a little better. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the second stage of this. We're going to change this probe mode up here to what's considered DCC mode by clicking this uh, arrow icon. And now you see at the bottom of the list there it says mode DCC. So this is direct computer control. This is the part where the machine will take over operation. So again, we're just going to click right on the model. This time though we're going to put more like six hits on the model instead of just the three that we did with manual. So there we are. 
We accept that in. There's our plane. Again, we rotate the model. Put six hits on this face. You see how quick and easy this is compared to making those manual measurements. Accepted our plane. And we'll just make four hits on this plane. And that will be fine. Accept that in. Okay, so now we need to make our alignment. There are a variety of alignment options um, available to us. Um, just changing the tags here now to say A1, B1, and C1. This uh, little uh, pop-up here is asking us if we want to maintain the same format for each of these that we're labeling, and I do not. So I'm just saying no each time. Okay. And so we're going to open up an alignment. This is known as a quick alignment. If you click on it, it creates an automatic alignment. However, you really don't have any easy way to verify the contents of it. It, it doesn't tell you a lot of information here. It works for the most part, but I don't completely trust it. So I'm going to open up a regular new alignment. Select the three planes that we just established. And now you see down here there is an option for a, uh, a quick alignment. And if we read all these lines up at the top here, you'll see that they're exactly the same as what we just did in our manual alignment. So although that's a quick and easy function, it's good to know how to do all of this uh, manually instead of just going for the quick one every time. It doesn't always work perfectly and it's good to establish uh, all the parameters by yourself at least once or twice. So I named this our DCC alignment and now you can see that our alignment is correct. We have labeled planes and we have our trihedron in exactly the correct orientation with Z facing up X going to the right and Y going to the back. So the only thing left to do here really is now to, to test this out and make sure that it really works. I'm going to save this first because that's the prudent thing to do. Uh, PC Demons can crash. It's good to save your work periodically. Now we're going to check this execute triangle up here up top and we'll begin to start to take these manual measurements for ourselves. So we are going to now try to execute our alignment. And it's a good idea after you've created it on screen to actually test it and make sure that it works properly. So if I execute this now, it tells me to put the probe at T1, A0, B0, that is the straight up and down position, we say OK. <clears throat> it now tells me in the dialog box to take hits one of three on plane. So <clears throat> I'm going to bring this up. We're going to recreate these <clears throat> hits we just did manually here before, just as the operator would do. Take our three hits, we accept it, and now it says to take hits one of three on plane B. It walks you through this. <clears throat> now additionally, we can enter in operator comments, which tell the operator exactly what to do at each stage of the game, and we'll get to that a little bit as we move on through this lesson. Okay, there's plane two. And moving along to plane three. Or as we call them, A, B, and C. It's a much better convention. Okay. So before I accept this, I'm going to move the probe up above this. And the reason being that once this thing goes to uh, 
automatic operation, it may want to try to move directly through the part to its next point, and we don't want that to happen. So it's a good idea to always raise the probe up before you accept it. Now it's going to go ahead and make the DCC alignment measurements. And you'll see there are many more points here now, and these were specified on the CAD drawing. It knows precisely where to move. Now, you see here how it got stuck. It actually came up on the screen as an error here, and there's a reason for that. Um, the reason is that um, it always tries to find the, the most direct route uh, each time. And we're going to talk about this a little bit more uh, as we move forward, but we can at least just move the probe out of the way and then move on and it will continue with its operation here. But typically we would use something called a move point. A move point allows you to bring the probe out to a specific spot and insert a command to move it. And you can insert the command using this arrow here or you can pull it up from the menu options. Again here we are we're stuck because it it tried to move through the, the block. But I can at least move it close and then prompt it to move forward again. So unless it crashes really violently, you can continue on with the process. So our alignment is now complete. Let's get this up out of the way. And you can see on screen that everything pretty much worked okay here. Um, there is another option besides uh, move point, which we can use. There's a feature called clearance cube, where you set a boundary outside of your part, and uh, after each operation, the probe will move outside of the clearance cube radius and then move to its next location. It's not always a guarantee, but it works a good percentage of the time. Typically, you use clearance cube or you use move points. Uh, move points are more of a sure thing. Clearance cube can still have its hiccups from time to time. Um, so, things to consider there.